All right, everyone, where is Stick? Some people were wondering. Of course, I had a terrible morning, actually. Uh, woken up very, very early. The baby decided not to sleep particularly well. The cats were acting up, and then I also had to go and get a car. Although, you know, that's fun. Driving does take a lot out of me because I hyper-focus on everything around me. And to boot, then the stroller decided to have a thrombosis and stop working properly and refused to unfold. It took about half an hour to figure out exactly what was wrong, and it had to be mostly disassembled. So, yeah, I've had a great day. How about you? Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about something a little bit more fun, which is the fact that Trump is, is essentially, at this point, he's unstoppable. I want you to take a look at link in the description, the, uh, the, the campaign ad that Trump has put out here. I want you to compare this to the ads that you see from literally anybody else in the goddamn field other than possibly Biden, although I've never actually seen an ad from him. Doesn't it look more polished? Uh, doesn't it look like it's simply on another level? Like it's basically, the, the, this is the, uh, the varsity team and everyone else is the JV team. Uh, again, other than the technical incumbent Joe Biden. I know that he didn't actually win election, but uh, other than that, um, is there any other serious political ad that you've seen so far? I, I haven't really seen many of them. Most of them are laughable, uh, including a couple of Trump's ads, actually, that have been put out. They've been more meme-worthy than anything else. This is more of serious business. And you look at polling. Um, look at all of the four starting states. Donald Trump is up by at least 24 points in all four of the starting states. He's up in every one of the Super Tuesday states, including Florida, although there haven't been any polls recently from there. Um, he's simply operating on a different level. This is why, by the way, he's not bothering to go to the GOP debate today. I will probably make a video on the GOP debate. Um, but I might actually not end up doing that. I might end up throwing it into the live stream just as one of the news stories that I cover uh, on the live stream for the day because it's irrelevant. Uh, it's, a, it's a campaign of basically Trump versus the also Rams. The only person that showed any signs of viability there, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, you can call him the flavor of the month basically. The only other person that ever entered the race that had any actual pulse politically was Ron DeSantis and he has self-sabotaged uh, unfortunately for him I have a feeling his political career is effectively over when he leaves his Florida governor and it didn't have to be that way he had a bright career ahead he would have been on the very very short list for front runner uh, I mean uh, for VP had uh, he decided to stand down along with Youngkin, Carrie Lake, Christy Noem and a few others I would like Rand Paul, but he's sort of at the back of the pack, undeservedly so, although, you know, you could put him in as Senate Speaker when Mitch McConnell finally croaks. That would be uh, definitely an improvement uh, on our legislature if Rand Paul were in that role. Trump, though, at this point, it's effectively, he's the nominee. Um, the only thing that he needs to do at this point is win Iowa. Because a lot of the candidates are single-mindedly fixating on Iowa as their potential to stop Trump. If he wins Iowa, the game is over. If he doesn't win Iowa, but he wins the next three, the game is also over. The latest point in this election season, barring Trump dying, being completely incapacitated, you know, he eats too many McDonald's burgers, maybe he has a stroke or something, yeah, that Coca-Cola really hit hard and it hit him like a sledgehammer and he couldn't even walk anymore. Unless Donald Trump is dead, incapacitated, or outright banned from running under the 14th Amendment, which is not even physically feasible, considering the charges against him have nothing to do with rebellion, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee. Um, there are people that are not happy about this. They think he can't win. I would challenge them on that based on polling and say, ah, well, if Trump is polling three or four points ahead of where he did in the last couple of elections, even in his best moments, he, uh, he can probably get reelected. Uh, the the uh, approval and disapproval rankings are, by the way, lies, damn lies, and statistics at this point. You can approve of somebody, but not vote for them. You can disapprove of somebody, but you can disapprove of their opponent more and vote for them anyway. This is basically what we're seeing, by the way. A load of people that don't like Trump dislike Biden more. Biden's dislikability is higher than Donald Trump's. Ergo, you will have a differential there. 
I do believe that Donald Trump can win re-election now. Whether or not there's a great honking in 2024, as there was in the 2020 election, and to an extent in 2022, remains to be seen. He is electable, and within the primaries, within the context of the primaries, he is effectively unstoppable. He's the only one that's running the kind of spit-shined mainline campaign that you would expect from someone who has already won a primary. He's already pivoted to the general. He is effectively ignoring the primary process entirely, having already been the President of the United States before. He's come out and effectively said this in every way other than explicitly stating it. Donald Trump is not currently running to be the GOP nominee. He's running to be the President of the United States in a general election. All of the other people have to fight and slog it out in a primary. He has chosen, I think wisely, to ignore them. While I would love to see Donald Trump up on a debate stage, I'd love to see him and, and Mike Pence especially go back and forth, and Christie would hammer him, and the GOP debate tonight is likely to devolve into just people who are whining about Trump and people who half-ass it, like DeSantis or Vivek Ramaswamy, and say, well, I mean, he does, he does deserve credit for all the good things he did, and he certainly should not be persecuted by a witch hunt indictment gate scandal, but I've got, here's, here's the top three reasons why I'm different than Donald. Yeah, I'm younger, and uh, um, I'm, um, I uh, support the TPP or something like that. All of that aside, this is basically a one-man race. You've got one candidate who has already niched it, effectively, is running in the general election, that's Donald Trump, and you have a bunch of other people running in the primary that they won't win, in which they are effectively doing nothing more than selling a book, trying out for a VP or a cabinet slot, like Ramaswamy, I think, and a few others. Larry Elder definitely comes to mind at this point. He got screwed by the GOP. And, 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 or self-aggrandizing, like Chris Christie. Again, a man who, when he retired as governor of New Jersey, I believe had the lowest overall approval of any governor in U.S. history in about 40 years. Yeah, no wonder he's at 2.6 in the aggregate. He, he's, he got his two share. He should feel uh, happy for himself. Trump is simply light years ahead of all of the opponents running against him. Whether you like him or you fucking hate him, he is almost certain to be the Republican nominee. That's the long and short of it. That's about all. Peace out.